Thanks for joining us here at the Weather Network. I'm meteorologist Jacqueline Woodall, and joining me is our chief meteorologist, Chris Scott. Thanks for taking the time to chat with me. You bet, Jacqueline. We talk a lot about different storm tracks, Colorado lows, Alberta clippers. Mm -hmm. The next storm that we're watching for eastern Canada is called a Texas low. Yes, and this one has yet to form. This thing is still way out in the Pacific. But we're concerned about the potential because these types of storms mm -hmm. have a tremendous amount of moisture. Okay. They tend to be some of the biggest storms you can get, especially in southern Ontario and Quebec. Atlantic Canada, we get big nor'easters all the time. But this is the type of system that may affect a very broad swath of population all across the eastern U.S. as well as eastern Canada. And it was a Texas low, historically speaking, that sank the Edmonds Fitzgerald uh, in Lake Superior. Yes, yeah, so these are big storms. So, okay, we've got something coming, and the question is, what is going to happen? Well, we can't address it exactly, but we can give you an idea of what may transpire as we head into early next week. Okay, let's go to these other series of graphics here, because this is a look at the Canadian model uh, that shows where it's sort of born, yeah. if you will, right down in the Texas panhandle. Yeah, so just some geographical reference here. This is Toronto right mm -hmm. here. Uh, there's Halifax. This is the state of Texas, and this is valid, this uh, computer model projection around Tuesday afternoon, and it's a low pressure system coming out of Texas, mm -hmm. heading towards the north and east. So that is one model's depiction of what is likely to transpire early next week. And the idea there is there's just a lot of moisture sure. that could be on the way. Because it's so close to the Gulf of Mexico, yep. draws in that moisture, but as you mentioned, it's nowhere near there yet. So tell us about this. Yeah, and this is why, this is just more for, I think, myself to try to cover, you know, just in case something <laughs> goes wrong. But the reality is with weather forecasting, it's amazing that we can see so far out into the future. Sure. When we're talking about seven days in advance, the reason why we can do this is mm -hmm. because of computer models. They can crunch all the numbers and tell us what's happening. But to give you some perspective, there's Toronto, there's Halifax, this is North America. This is the energy, what we could call the seed of the potential storm. And it's way out between Alaska and Hawaii. This thing has to track along the jet stream, which has changed, as which you were talking changed. about. Yes. Uh, we don't have that big ridge in the west protecting BC. This thing actually undercuts the ridge and is going to drift down here and then be born as a Texas low before coming up here. That's all the game plan. It's kind of like you're drawing out a, a plan in football, how a play will unfold. That's the way the play is going to unfold the next few days. And as you mentioned, the position of the jet stream uh, for the last week or two, we've been seeing this mild temperature trend out in the west. That's different. Yep. We are seeing more of an active track but not just through central United States, but southern United States. So they're going to see a more active track, it looks like. That's right. And this yeah. one is a big ticket storm that will likely affect, uh, you know, probably tens of millions of people. So let's talk about what may happen with this storm. Okay. Now, we've got a couple between now and then. Mm -hmm. So we're kind of jumping ahead. But the idea with this is that when you get a system this big coming up from the Gulf of Mexico or the Texas area, it can do a lot more in terms of impact than a system like this weekend's storm through southern right. Ontario, Quebec, and the Maritimes will do. Uh -huh. So that's our concern. And this weekend, we might be leaning on the milder side of our temperatures, mm -hmm. which is around that zero degree mark. So we know that maybe there's a chance of rain. Do you see any chance with this one being rain at this point? Well, there's a chance. Let's go to our graphic here showing, again, this is a computer model prediction. Here's Toronto, here's Halifax, here's the storm center uh, Wednesday into the afternoon. And if this verifies, mm -hmm. it's snow in the big cities of Canada. If it comes farther north, it turns to rain. A bit farther south, we miss it. So there's a lot of potential here, and we have to drill down into this over the next few days. All right, so a slight shift in track could make all the difference in you terms bet. of snowfall. Thanks for taking the time, Chris. And of course, we'll be keeping you updated as not only this storm get close, gets closer, but the ones in front of this one too. Don't go away.